One of the ways you can look at defining an acid or base is by this Arrhenius definition that classified an acid as a hydrogen producer and a base as a hydroxide producer. But another option is called the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Again, these were a couple of Scandinavians that came up with just a little different way of looking at acids and bases. And I like both, and I kind of like both definitions for different reasons. This works great with strong acids and strong bases, as well as the weak acids and weak bases. It really focuses on hydrogen and says that a Bronsted-Lowry acid is a hydrogen donor. And a base is a hydrogen acceptor. So we're looking at these reactions and we're really focusing on hydrogen. Who's giving hydrogen? Who's taking hydrogen? An acid is a particle that gives the hydrogen. It donates the hydrogen. And a base is a, is a particle that's accepting the hydrogen. It's, it's gaining the hydrogen. And so right away, I can look at these examples down here. There are four. And I could tell you two things. Number one, I could tell you that they are all weak. They're all weak acids and bases because they have to react with water in order to produce any kind of ion. So they're all weak. And then I could even tell you if they're acid or base. Acids should produce hydrogen Although sometimes it'll be in the form of this H3O hydronium. Oh, get out of there. H3O is really just the hydrogen ion attracted to a water molecule. So without, I mean, inspecting this reaction too closely, I could tell you that it is a weak acid. Bases produce hydroxide. So when I see OH on the product side, I can tell you it's a base. Weak base because it had to react with the water in order to produce that hydroxide ion. Same thing with this third one. There's water on the reactant side, so it's weak. Hydroxide on the product side, weak base. The last one, weak. And then I see the, uh, NA, or the um, H3O plus, weak acid. Okay, so again, I, that's great. That's a start. That we can at least look at these and say that they're, they're weak. They all have to react with water to produce any kind of ion. And then I can tell the acids, they'll produce H3O, that hydronium. And bases will produce hydroxide. But now here's what this Bronsted-Lowry does. This definition really looks at these reactions as a transfer of hydrogen. And so we want to inspect them a little bit more closely to figure out like where the change is occurring. So for example, if I look at this first particle, CH3COOH, and then you find kind of its partner on the product side, which is usually pretty easy. Like I can kind of tell these particles go together. They start with the CH3COO. But then can you tell that on the product side we're missing the hydrogen? So what's the change? Well, it must be that this original particle lost a hydrogen. Because on the product side, the hydrogen on the end is missing. The hydrogen donor is an acid. So we would say this guy is an acid. Now here's where it gets crazy. What if you do the same thing to water? What if you do the same thing with the water? You say, well, H2O turns into H3O. Hmm. It's got an extra hydrogen. It must have accepted the hydrogen. If some particle is accepting hydrogen, it's gaining hydrogen, it's acting like a base. And now you freak out because you say, wait a second, somebody told me that water is neutral. What business do I have labeling water as a 
space. Well, water is only neutral when it's in a beaker all by itself. If it's just a bunch of H2O molecules, then yeah, water's really not transferring hydrogen. It's not gaining hydrogen or losing hydrogen. But this is not a pure solution. This is water in the presence of something else. And in this reaction, in this chemical reaction, water is, is picking up the hydrogen. So the, the transfer of hydrogen looks like this. It's this little hydrogen that's being picked up by the water. The acid is the hydrogen donor and the base is the hydrogen acceptor. Crazy. Now, what if we do that again to the second one? On uh, the second one, I look at my particle and I say, well, what's going on here? Uh, this NH3, we find its partner, it probably turns into this NH4, right? And I say, well, what's the difference? NH3, NH4, it gained a hydrogen. It accepted a hydrogen. A particle that can pick up hydrogen, it can remove hydrogen from the solution, it gains hydrogen. That's a base. It's a, we kind of looked at this NH3 in a previous video, and we even labeled this solution as base. This is just a little different way of defining base. Instead of saying that hydroxide is going to be produced, which, I mean, obviously it is, we can look at that NH3 and say, ooh, yeah, he's a base. He's a hydrogen acceptor. Well, where'd the hydrogen come from? Well, now I look at water and you find its partner on the product side. Oh, H2O must have lost a hydrogen. Now it's just one hydrogen and an oxygen. Well, we usually say acids are hydrogen donors. Oh my gosh, we just labeled water resin acid now. What is it? It depends. Water can go either way. It depends on if it's if it's a hydrogen donor or an acceptor. It can do both. Totally just depends on what hydrogen is with or what water is with in the beaker. Interesting. So here's the transfer of hydrogen. It was from water. One of the hydrogens from water was picked up by the NH3. It was attracted to that negative nitrogen. Oh, yeah. The acid is the donor. The base is the acceptor. Craziness. Uh, let's say I got this CH3NH2. What the heck is it? Is it acid? It doesn't start with hydrogen, and it's not ending with hydroxide. Well, let's, let's see what it does. So in solution, it's CH3NH2. On the product side, which you can usually tell like, what it turns into, CH3, NH3, there's an extra hydrogen. It must have gained a hydrogen. Well, if it's gaining a hydrogen or accepting a hydrogen, that bad boy's base. Well, then I look at water again. Water turned from H2O to OH. Water was the donor. Water was the acid. Water gave one of its hydrogen ions to the nitrogen that's kind of on the end of that NH2. The nitrogen is pretty electronegative, and it's attracted to any kind of hydrogen. Sometimes so attracted that it rips it right off. Seems kind of mean, right? Or I've got this one on the bottom. Oh, brother. Uh, HClO4, this partner must be the ClO4, and it, and it looks like it lost a hydrogen. An acid is a hydrogen donor. Which then, I'm going to guess that water must be the base. I mean, there has to be a give and take. Like We have to have a donor and an acceptor. There has to be an acid and a base. So if this HClO4 is going to donate a hydrogen, does water pick it up? 
H2O to H3O. Yep. Water is acting like a base. Water was the hydrogen acceptor. Weird. And so again, we're focusing not so much just on the formulas now, but, but really what's happening in the solution. Who's got the hydrogen and who's going to pick it up? It's a transfer of hydrogen from the acid to the base. Now, there is one other thing that's kind of interesting about these reactions here. Do you notice that they're written with these double-sided arrows? Which is definitely something that we pick up more on in, in like a second year of chemistry. But I mean, a double-sided arrow just means that this reaction can go both ways. It means that it's reversible. And that happens all the time with acids and bases, especially particles in the solution. So I got a couple more vocab words. Uh, conjugate acid. I'm trying to think of like the best way to describe this. The conjugate acid is the pair to the base. And right now, it's like, what does that even mean? I'll show you. It'll make sense. The conjugate base is the pair to the acid. Both of these, these conjugate acid and conjugate base, they will both be on the product side. On the product side. Okay, so it works like this. Let's say we flip backwards. And we look at, at these four equations again. They're reversible, which means then that, that I mean, we go forward and, and we make these products. But what if these products collide with each other and they transfer the hydrogen back? That could shift this thing in reverse. You say it shifts in reverse. And so again, especially when particles are in solution and they're constantly moving and they can bump into each other. And, and I, what if they bump into each other in such a way that, that this extra hydrogen goes back to the original CH3COO? What if it gives this hydrogen back? Well, now on the product side, the conjugate acid is the pair to the original base. And so the original base was water. Well, now the pair, we say, is the conjugate acid. And it kind of makes sense. Acids and bases have to come in pairs. In one direction, the particle is the donor. In one direction, the particle is the acceptor. If this thing shifts reverse, now H3O has to give back the hydrogen, and this particle acts like the hydrogen donor. And we always said that H3O is the sign of an acid. You betcha. This particle has the potential of donating that hydrogen back to the solution. This thing can act like an acid. It's a conjugate acid. The conjugates are always on the product side, and that word conjugate means pair. So it's like the pair to the original base. That if this thing shifts in reverse, now in order for H3O to go back to the original, this guy's got to give back the hydrogen. It's got to act like the acid. On the flip side, in order for this guy to go back to the original, he's got to gain that hydrogen back. We call him the conjugate base. He's the hydrogen acceptor. Ah, craziness. So again, let's look at the second one and say, what if this thing goes in reverse? What if this guy wants to go back to the original H2O? Well, then he's got to gain a hydrogen. And so what happens is that, I mean, these guys are produced, these 
ions are produced in the solution, but again, they're moving around. And what if they collide with each other? And what if they collide in such a way that one of these hydrogens goes back to the OH? Oh, well, now the hydrogen acceptor is the base. OH is called a conjugate base because now it's going to be the hydrogen acceptor. And it kind of makes sense because I always said that hydroxide is the sign of a base. Well, then on the flip side, if NH4 wants to go back to the original NH3, then he's got to give away that extra hydrogen. The hydrogen donor is the acid. So we label this guy as the conjugate acid. It's the pair to the original base. Acids and bases come in pairs. In one direction, the particle is acting like the donor. In the other direction, it's acting like the acceptor. Similar with the third. In the third, again, we've got that OH. And what if it collides with this big positive ion? And what if one of these hydrogens is then transferred back to the hydroxide? Oh. Well, then the hydrogen donor ends up being the conjugate acid. If this guy wants to go back to the original, he's got to give away that extra hydrogen. Who's going to take it? Hydroxide says, I got that for you. The conjugate base. If hydroxide wants to go back to water, he's got to pick up that hydrogen. Because again, these are reversible reactions. And it happens a lot with particles in solution, meaning they're in water because there's a little more movement amongst the particles and, and they're gonna collide more often. And, and it's possible that they collide in such a way then that the hydrogen ion is transferred back to the original particle. Same thing on the last one. If these guys collide, these particles on the product side, it's possible that one of those extra hydrogen ions, I want that in green, an extra hydrogen, goes back to the ClO4. So the hydrogen donor becomes the conjugate acid. If H3O wants to go back to H2O, he's got to give away that extra hydrogen. The acceptor becomes the conjugate base. If this ClO4 wants to go back to the original, he's got to be the hydrogen acceptor. He's got to gain the hydrogen. And what you'll find on the product side is that these conjugates are always charged. They're always the charged ions on the product side. A positive ion is always an acid. It's always a conjugate acid. The reason why it's positive is because it has an extra positive hydrogen. So it always has the potential of donating that hydrogen back to the solution. The hydrogen donor is the acid. So typically, the positive ion on the product side is always the acid. The negative ion on the product side is always the base. I mean, a negative ion is always something that, that would be attracted to hydrogen. I mean, anything negative would be attracted to something positive. So if there's the potential for an extra positive hydrogen to be produced, then these negative ions are going to pick it up. They'll be attracted to that extra positive. They'll be the hydrogen acceptor. So the conjugate base is usually the negative particle on the product side. And again, it all stems from the fact that these are reversible reactions. When I have ions in solution and those ions are swimming around, it's very positive, uh, very possible that they'll collide with each other in a way then that shifts the whole thing back to the original neutral particles. Those are the conjugates. Uh, and then finally, this word amphiprotic. Amphiprotic is a particle that can act. Particle that can act like an acid or a base. So like this prefix, like ampha, 
I mean, it's like both. An amphibian can go on both land and water. Amphiprotic is a particle that can act like an acid or a base. One of the best examples is water. Great example. Water can act like an acid or a base. Water can be the hydrogen donor and produce hydroxide, or it can be the hydrogen acceptor and produce that NH3. Another example might be something like this guy, HCO3 minus. This guy could act like an acid or a base. It's the bicarbonate ion, like sodium bicarbonate. It can act like an acid because it has a hydrogen. So it could donate the hydrogen. And acting like an acid, it would look like this. HCO3 minus could produce that hydrogen ion. And then it'd be left with CO3 minus 2. It could act like an acid. Anything that produced hydrogen is acidic but it can also act like a base. A base is a hydrogen acceptor. So what if there are hydrogen ions in the solution? And then I have this HCO3 minus. Well, that negative charge means that it's really attracted to hydrogen ions. And I could end up forming H2CO3 where it's really like the plus one hydrogen and then carbonate is minus two. It could do that. And that would be a way of removing hydrogen from the solution, where now that HCO3 bicarbonate ion is acting like a base. It's acting like a hydrogen acceptor. It's attracted to hydrogen versus the first equation where it's acting like an acid. It's producing hydrogen. It's a hydrogen donor.